As a society, we should first and foremost want healthy families without regard to the fairness. Having children the old-fashioned way is a necessary part of human survival at this point in our history. Saying we should have rights is a modern invention, an evolution narrowly unnecessary. Let me let you in on a little secret about evolution. It's neither fair-minded or logical. It is purely strategic. Fact. Giving women the choice after the fact of intercourse helps increase mother-child bonding by forcing a mother to positively affirm their child and this necessarily decreases the number of unwanted children. What benefits would we see if we gave men a similar choice? There is no question in my mind of the argument that men should have a choice after the fact. The same as a woman is fair-minded. But here is where things get weird and not weird in a good way. A man has to publicly reject their offspring for this to work and the effects of that public rejection has no direct effect on the birth or non-birth of that child. So children will be born and will become people that will have been publicly rejected by their birth fathers. What impact will that have? If you don't have children, the emotions of that statement may elude you. So you're likely more objective than me. If you live in a small community, that social stigma of a public rejection could be quite hostile towards men. Now clearly the information could be sealed. But what if a man wants to change his mind? Can he? Unlike a woman who has an abortion, there are no fruits of that union. So unlike the choice that a woman has, a man in theory could undo the choice of rejection and a man will never have the choice of keeping the child in the first place when she doesn't want to keep it. Now it is similar to giving a child up for adoption, but it's not completely the same because adoption will still the choice to give life. When a man says, I don't care, he is saying, I don't care whether the child lives or dies. Things to think about. I don't want people to think in terms of fair. I want people to think in terms of the consequences of actions. What are the strategic ramifications of being fair? Is this an example of where being fair does not work for practical reasons? Human sexuality is an asymmetrical proposition in many ways, and the asymmetry of that proposition will be projected into any decision we make after the fact. By holding men more accountable, does that accountability decrease or increase unwanted babies in single-family homes? Does holding women more accountable, does that increase or decrease the number of unwanted babies in single-parent homes? These are the important questions that I don't think we have the answers to. The question to me is not whether it's right or wrong. The question to me is, does it lead to healthier families? We can say it is fair, but being fair may be the worst thing we could possibly do. In the TV series 24, the whole point of the show was to show examples where fair has nothing to do with it and is everything to do with the effects of the choices we make. These are called strategic imperatives. The unfairness of the asymmetry of choice is clear, but no one should walk away with the idea there exists a simple solution. Every solution brings with it a new set of problems that we need to work through. Please comment, criticize, and share your opinion.